This is the phone I was planning to buy this year. Well, not exactly this one. I was actually hoping for the Z4. But what we got instead was the Xperia Z3 Plus. Now, last year when I reviewed the Z3, I absolutely adored that phone. It had some unique features on offer that none of the other smartphones could match up to. And now that I've used the Z3 Plus for 10 days, that feeling's kind of changed. Don't get me wrong, I still love this phone. I think Sony's done a brilliant job in packing in so much in such a slim and light form factor. But it's also got some flaws that are unforgivable. Here's why the Xperia Z3 Plus is the phone that I would always want but never buy. Waterproof. Now, who doesn't like a waterproof phone? How many of us have actually had accidents where water's, you know, actually seeped into the phone one way or the other in the rains, in the monsoons, or you've actually dropped your phone in the pool or in, the, in a tub of water? You know, accidents happen. Sony has done a brilliant job maintaining their waterproof design. And if you actually think about it, this is the only waterproof phone amongst the flagship smartphones. So something that really stands out. And also keep in mind that the camera works underwater. Even though the touchscreen functionality is not there, but the camera works underwater because of the dedicated camera button, which is, I think, brilliant. Slimmer and lighter. I know it doesn't look much different from the previous generation Z3, but I love the Z3 design. I think it was almost perfect. And I think Sony's done a good thing by sticking to this design philosophy. And this is a design that's actually worked for them. It puts it in that premium league, the brushed metal on the sides, the toughened glass on the front and the back. And I think this has really stood out over the years and I think they've done a brilliant job this year because the flaps, as you notice at the bottom, the micro USB port is open and even the headphone jack at the top is open. Something that we'd not seen in the previous gen phones because uh, there were flaps that were covering it because of the waterproof functionality. And because they're open, you can submerge them in the water and you don't have to bother about that. I think that's a brilliant design implementation. And the other thing that you'll notice is that the speakers this time are sandwiched right on the edge beneath the glass. You can hardly see them even though they pack in quite a punch. And there are some features that are really exclusive to this phone and we really love them. Uh, the built-in answering machine, I, I just can't stop talking about it. It's such a brilliant feature for anyone who's busy, who's in between meetings, who gets a lot of unwanted calls, would love that feature because the way it works, it, it takes your, all your calls, you can record a message, it doesn't go to a carrier voicemail and all your messages are right there in the call log, you can play and listen to them right there. And the most killer feature is when the message is being recorded, you can actually listen in to the message being recorded and choose to answer the call just like a regular answering machine. Now, those are those brilliant features that really, really set this smartphone apart. A lot of people might say that the interface is very simple, but I'm not really complaining. I think they've got some add-on features that are brilliant. For starters, this works in landscape mode. Now, how many Android phones work in landscape mode uh, completely with the interface working in landscape mode, like just like in a tablet? The other add-on is that it's got a record screen option. Just by pressing the power button, you can actually select this and it captures the full HD video of your screen, whatever is happening on your screen, which can be used for presentations or to actually demo something. It's not really for everyone, but the fact that this feature is there is great. And if you've got a PlayStation, then you're gonna love this one. The remote play feature is brilliant. We've tried it out. You can actually mirror the screen and cast the entire gameplay onto your screen. And you can even connect your controller to the phone and use the controller separately or use our on-screen controls, which we don't really recommend because most of these games are designed for the PlayStation, for the console, and they're meant to be played with the controller. The specs inside are also great. 3 GB RAM, Snapdragon 810 chipset. I mean, uh, there's no performance issue at all. Multitasking, gaming, everything was brilliant. So when you sum all these features up, it really sets the Xperia Z3 Plus apart from all the other smartphones. Now moving on to the flip side of things. Here's why we hate the Xperia Z3 Plus. Now I know hate is a very strong word, but these are issues that you just cannot live with. 
Now we know that the Snapdragon 810 chipset has some heating issues and the Xperia Z series also had some heating issues previously and some of us actually believe that because of the waterproofing the phone couldn't actually dispel heat as well as other phones but whatever said and done I think it's completely unforgivable the phone heated up on simple tasks and multitasking uh, sporadically and we just couldn't understand it and especially when we launched the camera and had it on uh, the app was on for a while and you were let's say recording a video the app would suddenly crash and there would be a pop-up screen saying that the phone the app might crash because the phone's heating up so the camera app crashing on you at a crucial moment we are at a big event and you know it's a big moment in your life and the camera is not available not cool now the Z series has retained that 1080p resolution for the last three generations. Now it's not a big deal but considering all the other flagship smartphones are now 1440p resolution, uh, I think Sony could have specked it up. And when you talk about outdoor visibility, comparing it to the other phones, it, this was really not visible. And if you have to be finicky, at different viewing angles, it does feel washed out. It's not a big deal but Sony could have done better. The camera on this, even though it's a 20.7 megapixel sensor, it's megapixels isn't everything. When you compare shots head to head to all the other flagship smartphones like the G4, the S6 or the One M9 Plus, I think the Xperia Z3 Plus is the worst. Now when you look at the shots individually, they don't look all that bad and trust me, you won't be disappointed with the camera as such. And Sony's done a great job when it comes to the interface. I think the auto mode on this camera is brilliant. There are lots of modes to choose from, but the auto mode is absolutely brilliant. It adjusts very well. It's just so sad. Sony could have done so much with the Xperia Z3 Plus. I mean, give it some room to breathe, some more millimeters so that that heating issue didn't exist. The camera app won't crash and they could have put in a 1440p screen but Sony decided to play safe. Anyway, that's not a deal breaker. That heating issue, an absolute deal breaker. Otherwise, you have an almost perfect phone. I mean, waterproof, built-in answering machine, slim, light. What's there not to like? Anyway, what do you think of the Xperia Z3 Plus? If you have any questions about this phone, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. And if you've made it this far in the video, be nice, like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.